story of the day. And maybe this is something you haven't been following because it's not as colorful as the usual nonsense surrounding the president. But the big story is whether and when the White House will release the so-called Nunes memo. This is a memo written by Devin Nunes, who's a Republican congressman from California. He's the head of the House Intelligence Committee. This, by the way, is his high school yearbook photo. Somebody <laughs> dug that in. This person is now the head of the House Intelligence Committee, which should give you an idea of how much intelligence we're dealing with. He looks like the disturbed cousin that comes to visit in a very special episode of an 80s sitcom. <laughs> anyway, Devin Nunes is somehow still in charge of this Russia investigation in the House, in spite of the fact that he recused himself from the investigation after he got caught sneaking to the White House to share information with the people he was supposed to be investigating. To call Devin Nunes Donald Trump's lapdog would be an insult to dogs and laps. He's not a lapdog. <laughs> He's more of a retriever. Here, boy, go write me a memo to smear the FBI. <laughs> good, good boy. So Devin Nunes recused himself in April, which was the right thing to do. But now that we're in February, he's back. He's unrecused. And he wrote a memo that claims the FBI overstepped their surveillance of Trump foreign policy advisor Carter Page, which in a very obvious attempt to paint the FBI as biased against Donald Trump and to discredit the work of the special counsel. Because here's how our government works now. If your party is in charge, you can lie, you can cheat, you can game the system to benefit your buddies. You can basically do whatever you want. But then when a newspaper digs whatever you did up and publishes a story about it, you don't just attack the facts. You don't just attack the story. You attack the newspaper. The newspaper is biased. Even if the newspaper clearly isn't biased. That Stormy Daniels story, the newspaper that published a report about Trump paying her off, that was the Wall Street Journal. You know who owns the Wall Street Journal? Rupert Murdoch, the guy who owns Fox News and the first four hours of the president's day every day published that story. <laughs> but that story, according to our president, that story is fake news, even though it was published in a newspaper owned by a man Donald Trump worships and talks to once a week. Even though the source of the story is pro-Trump, we should disregard it because he said we should. That's step one. Step two is when multiple newspapers and news organizations and reporters further an investigation, whatever the investigation, when they report something you don't like, if you're the president now, you don't just attack the newspapers or the news networks, you attack the media. You say the media is biased. You call them the elite media. They're all in league together. Everyone except Fox and Friends is plotting together. Everyone other than Fox and Friends is making things up to try to defeat me because they don't want America to be great again. So they're sitting in their offices coming up with stories about Russians and collusion and obstruction just to get me and the people who support me believe it. And then, once the media is playing defense, you climb another rung. When your problems start to move up to the FBI, when the FBI steps in and starts sniffing around and handing out subpoenas, now you get nervous. So what do you do? Same thing you always do. You attack, in this case, the FBI. You discredit the FBI. The discredit the special counsel. You discredit anybody who might possibly come up with information you don't like. And never mind the fact that most of the people you say are against you are lifelong Republicans, like Robert Mueller, who <laughs> voluntarily enlisted in the Marines to fight in Vietnam, who served as U.S. attorney, who served in the Department of Justice, who prosecuted John Gotti, who was named director of the FBI by President Bush. Robert Mueller is now against you. He turned somehow. Jim Comey is against you. He turned. Rod Rosenstein, who you appointed, turned. They're all somehow part of this conspiracy against you, and you want them out. See, this is what happens when the only rule in your house growing up is, you don't like the butler? Well, we'll fire the butler. <laughs> and so the head of the FBI, Christopher Wray, said he has grave concerns about the release of this memo. He says the memo is misleading and might even resign if the memo gets released. That's the report we've been hearing. This is not some Obama holdover. This is a man who, according to a very stable genius, has impeccable credentials. I mean, <laughs> look at this. I'll be nominating Christopher A. Ray, a man of impeccable credentials, to be the new director of the FBI. And now you have a problem with him. But that doesn't matter, because now that you've convinced the people who follow you that everyone you say is dishonest is dishonest. The media, the FBI, the Department of Justice, special counsel, if they eventually do start locking up members of your team and of your family, you can say, I've been telling you all along these guys are out to get me. And then you can hand out a bunch of pardons without a citizen revolt because it was a witch hunt. They made it all up to get you. This is basically the same defense OJ used, okay? And it worked. <laughs>
OJ lives in Vegas now and plays a lot of golf. <laughs> which is, I'm sure, where Donald Trump wishes he was. And maybe the most outrageous part of all of it is Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, all these guys go right along with it. They will actually help you destroy the credibility of men they know are honest. They will destroy the credibility of institutions that are necessary to the security of this country to get what they want. Paul Ryan is sitting there. He could stop. He's watching all this happen like the ringmaster at the world's most perverted circus. The <laughs> lions are eating the horses. The tight ropes are snapping. Clowns are attacking children. The torch jugglers have set the tent on fire. And Paul Ryan is standing there smiling and waving like an animatronic <laughs> Forrest Gump or something. <laughs> and the thing I keep going back to, if you want to use common sense, if Trump really has nothing to hide, let the investigations play out. Let them prove your innocence. Maybe you are, maybe Donald Trump is innocent. He could be. I don't know. None of us know. We're not on the special counsel. But Donald Trump knows, so he wants to release that memo just to cover himself. And that's probably what he'll do tomorrow. And by the way, Donald, if you do release that mem memo, I would like to see your tax returns, too. Those, <laughs> I mean, you promised that to us, and I know you keep your promises. You want, are you following me, Guillermo? Yes, Jimmy. Okay, recap what I said. <laughs> okay, well, Jimmy is saying that all of them are full of I that sums it up. That's the way I understand. All right. We probably could have <laughs> saved a lot of time if I just turned that over to you. Yeah. <laughs> I am Jimmy Kimmel. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hit subscribe and all your dreams will come true, assuming your dreams are to watch more YouTube videos.